Hello and welcome. I'm Sumi K and today I'm going to be reviewing Kartcraft. Is this review meant for you? Well, if you're looking for an ultra realistic karting experience, then yes, this review is definitely meant for you. If you're looking for very much an arcade kind of experience, then no, this review and probably this game are not really intended for you. That being said, everyone is welcome here and I do respect and appreciate all thoughts and opinions, so I do encourage you and ask you to leave me feedback in the comments section below. So this is Kartcraft, an indie racing simulation sports title that is in early access on Steam right now. It's developed and published by Black Delta and IMGN Pro. They've got a few previous games, none of which I personally have played, but they certainly haven't made a sim, and physics are a tricky thing to master. The game was released in early access on the 1st of November 2018, and at the moment on Steam at least, the game will set you back £15.99. I am grateful to Black Delta and IMGN Pro for sending me this key in order to make this review. In fairness, they did send this key quite a while back, and it's only now that I have had time to take a good look at it. Honestly, I think that's a good thing, because within that time frame, they have actually added VR support to Kartcraft, and I will be taking a look at that and talking about that today as well. This is an early access title. There are a lot of placeholders and bugs and unfinished aspects to the game. But I will tell you right from the start that this game has an excellent base and a heck of a lot of potential. It is fair to note that updates are not coming exactly thick and fast, or at least they are not seemingly updating their Steam updates very often, coming in at one update every two months or thereabouts. That being said, the most recent updates have been pretty large, with physics and VR being the main focus, and having tested them out, I would say that both are about 75-80% to 80 right, by which I mean functional, but needs more work. The Kartcraft developers are certainly aware of this, and openly discuss known bugs and issues too, which in my humble opinion, and experience, is always a good sign. The UI is certainly functional, but at times it can be buggy or indeed confusing. This is partly due to the in-game bugs making sliders all but impossible to move, but also because of their totally unique approach to menu mechanics. On the most part, I applaud their approach to menu control. Left click to enter, right click to go back, and simply save or discard those changes at the end. It works brilliantly and I think all future menu systems should certainly consider adopting this approach. But in contrast, some menu options are somewhat hidden behind what I would call secret horizontal sliding menu systems, which I only discovered by pure accident. I was not so impressed with that. This is easy to fix, however. You could either move it to a vertical scroll or just make it evidently clear that there are more options available in the horizontal scroll. Setting up my G29, I believe, should have been incredibly straightforward. Unfortunately for me, it wasn't. However, I placed the vast majority of the issues that I encountered here squarely at the doorstep of Logitech's new G Hub software. I'm not a fan. In fact, in order to get my G29 working at all in this game, I ended up removing the G-Hub system from my PC completely and reverted back to the older Logitech profiler, which instantly made everything work as expected. There are a decent number, an impressive number, of predefined profile setups available for wheel support in the game as it is. And it is totally possible and really quite easy to configure your device if there is no immediate detection or profile available. The button binding support is excellent and I was easily able to bind everything I wanted to what I wanted it to be bound to. There was absolutely no issue with this at all, except for one thing. Now I understand that carts don't have clutches, and that's probably why the clutch on my G29 is not recognised at all. But having played an alternative kart racing game, I can really vouch 
for the benefits of having your brake on the clutch pedal. It just makes the whole thing seem really, really, really realistic. Now I'm aware that the clutch doesn't have the same bite or resistance that the brake pedal does, but having tried both approaches, I have to say that having my brake on the clutch would be my favorite option. So it's a shame that it's not there, and hopefully if the developers watch this video, they'll take that into consideration for the future. So whilst everything was easy to configure and set up, I would have personally preferred to have the profile pre-allocate some of the key options, like accept and back being bound to some of my G29 buttons, and reset to track started off bound to something strangely named face up. I spent a bit of time trying to figure out what key face up was, but in the end I just rebound it to D-pad up and that worked perfectly well. The game offers an impressive amount of options and tweaking despite still being in early access. They're using the Unreal Engine so you can already probably guess what blurry issues, physics limitations and graphics that this title is going to have. I have to say graphically the game is certainly pleasing to the eye, even more so in VR perhaps, but I'll get to that in a moment. The audio is loud and very authentic and representative of real-life kart racing. If you're expecting to hear the beautiful rumble of a V8, then you're in the wrong arena. This is certainly authentic. For me, the fact that the game ships with AI opponents at this early stage is impressive and certainly one of the game's saving graces, as without them, the game would have very little replayability. And that is taking into account the as yet rather unrefined AI behaviour. I have seen evidence of the AI attempting to avoid me, but often they then tend to overcompensate and veer back into your side. But this is already pretty well established and the future looks good. Game content is pretty limited at the moment. There are a number of branded names, customization, and placeholders in place, which for early access is certainly acceptable. The game currently only has three tracks, and although they are laser scanned, recent physics updates have made some of the curbs too aggressive. But as mentioned before, they do highlight this fact in the patch notes. I think this game in early access would really benefit from having more tracks for people to play on. They don't necessarily have to be laser scan, realistic or even real life tracks for me. Just the variation would be an interesting addition. So to the racing itself. My first couple of laps were all about finding the weight and responsiveness of the cart. I have to say the physics are not yet perfect but we are definitely on the realistic feel arena and with each patch I'm sure this will close in. The default force feedback, which is incidentally set to gamepad, seemed pretty okay to me. A little bit too light for what I would regard as realistic, as carts do have pretty heavy steering. But when I tried to enhance this, I accidentally removed all force feedback, making the cart feel super light. This did not help me at all, as in doing that, I also lost a lot of feedback about what the tyres were doing. So this might be bugged at the moment. It's difficult to say, but despite my best efforts, I was simply unable to re-engage the default force feedback settings, and there didn't appear to be a reset to default button either. So that was a little bit frustrating, but honestly, in the overall scheme of things, it wasn't that big an issue, and I did eventually get used to it. Interestingly, at the start of each race, there is this sort of holding area, if you will, where you have absolutely no control over anything. Here I experienced a quite considerable bug. Hitting the return key, as instructed, made the screen flash on and off, but never actually allowed me to progress. What seems to have happened here is that the game had lost focus somehow. 
I eventually figured out that hitting Alt-Tab a few times and then hitting the Enter button did eventually fix the problem, and as soon as I did this once, the problem never reoccurred. Throughout my testing, I only raced on one track. I will explain why that is in a moment. But it was easy to see that the track design is very good and the grass is slippery, which is a good thing. As a tip to you uh, first timers, try and remember that your rear wheels stick out further than your front wheels. This caught me out time and time again. As mentioned earlier, some of the curbs will flip you and fully flipping your car is certainly an option but there are no ragdoll effects in place at the moment at least, and you can simply reset to the track. After each race, you do get a breakdown of your results, but I think more could be done here. Seeing the AI fastest laps for one would be an improvement. The game has a few difficulty settings. I tried racing on both the hardest and what they call adaptive settings. I'm not sure that I actually noticed any difference between the two, and I'm assuming that adaptive is going to get harder as you get better, which I have to say is a really cool feature, if it works. I enjoyed the racing. The AI on the most part were fine and challenging enough. I was a little disappointed to find no support for head tracking though. Hopefully this is something that will be added further down the line, but as the game does now have VR support, I thought I would test out the VR too, and yes, you can flip in VR, hence why I only tried one track for my tests. VR support is mostly solid. Screen rotation needs constantly resetting, but other than that, it works as expected. I did have one full complete crash and some minus semi-serious stutters, and at this time I would say the game induces VR nausea. It doesn't seem perfectly aligned for me, or something like that. But once I managed to man up a bit and got myself focused, I really did find it exhilarating. As the game stands, it has a lot of good foundations in place, and the AI is a massive plus. That alone is a reason to come back and play. I do think that whilst the game is in early access, it could really benefit from having more tracks, far more so than adding additional player customization or branded products. The game does ship with full controller support and extensive wheel support, but no multiplayer at the moment, although they do have a PvP leaderboard, so I suspect this is something that will definitely be added in the future. The game's roadmap is nothing short of exciting and I encourage you to go and have a look and do your own research around this game. As the game evolves, I will have to come back and review it many times over. And the key coming feature for me is the ability to build your own cart from the ground up with over 60 components and more than 1,000 parts. This is not currently implemented as so far as I can see, there appears to be only one engine that you have no control or ability to modify yourself. But as an idea, this is certainly something that's going to engage and entice a lot of people to come and play. I would like to see multiplayer, a career and more tracks added sooner rather than later. But without doubt, this will eventually suit both hardcore and serious arcade players very well. Right now, content is limited but the potential is very high indeed. I'm Sim UK. If you've enjoyed this video, I implore you, please hit that like button. It'll only take you a second and means a huge amount to a small and struggling channel like Sim UK. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Goodbye for now.